When, when did you decide um, to enter seminary? Well, that was sort of, I'd say those kinds of things are like a process, if you wish. Right. Uh, it's funny because at a young age, uh, that seemed to often be put before me, partially because there were priests and sisters in my family. Mom's brother was a priest. I have a cousin who's quite a bit older than I who is a priest. I have other cousins who are sisters, nuns. And so in Catholic school, very often I would be asked, oh, wouldn't you like to be a priest like your uncle? That, that kind of thing. And at the time, strange as it might seem, maybe I uh, really made the right decision because I, I would perhaps be starving. Uh, I would also say that I wanted to be a farmer. That was my ideal, it seemed as though farming in the country and animals and just that kind of beauty and maybe it's already, you know, the aesthetic coming out of me that um, wanted to put me out in nature that way. Uh, over the years, of course, you sort of weed things out and um, uh, I dare say that from a rather early age, even junior high and high school, priesthood was certainly an option or a possibility. But there too, those things sort of vary. And then for us, of course, even though you decide to be a priest, it's sort of like what kind of priest? You know, are you going to be in a religious congregation or order that teaches? Or you're going to be a missionary? You're going to be in parishes? You're going to be in a monastery as a, a monk, a um, contemplative uh, person? So that is what I sort of had. And, and I, I had many of those ideas. I think when you're young and idealistic, uh, you look at all these options. So I ended up being uh, in a parish, uh, in parishes, I should say, being a diocesan priest here in Maine. And that has become, I think, uh, really my place and fine, fine with me. So it's um, just one way of, I think, spending one's life in a kind of service that also sort of goes both ways. Um, you attended one of our services, and I'm sure that though as a priest, I lead the service. I'm sure you saw the participation of the people, and those people are very, very dear to me, and they're very supportive, so it's almost like, you know, we're not in this alone. And uh, right now, actually, we have one of the usual members of that group who is very sick at the hospital, and uh, I've been, you know, sharing with them. We've been praying for her, and it's just been, you know, it's like a, uh, it's like a community. You know, it's like a a family that really, really cares, and uh, I think there, there's been a lot of support there. So it, it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. I think they depend on me in many ways, but I depend on them also. And that, to me, I think is a, uh, is a healthy kind of uh, interdependence, not, uh, um, you know, not something that um, is possessive or anything, I don't think, but it's, uh, I think it, it's community at what I think is its best. Did you have um, like a quote-unquote calling, or was it more just mm -hmm. the process that you described? Yeah. Um, I'm just curious. Yep. Yeah, and, and people often ask that, you know, uh, and I think those who are wondering whether or not this may be their calling, they're sort of waiting for something very indirect, you know, to be zapped from right from on high. I cannot say that. However, I, as I look back, I can certainly say that people and circumstances and my own, well, qualities and talents uh, sort of all came together to point me in that direction. And uh, that to me is also a calling, if you wish. And I see that in others also. You know, I see people who seem to be such wonderful parents. Well, I look at that and I marvel at that because I don't know if I could be that gracious and generous in parenting. But I certainly look at them being in uh, their vocation. And I, uh, I, I also find great inspiration and support there. We have some single people here in the parish who uh, are like, you know, aunts or great aunts to so many people and who are so good to these people. And here are people who've never had children. But again, they're, they're certainly doing something very precious and special. And I think that they have their calling. So it's just, um, well, a variety of different things that, and for myself, trying to unite different things as I do in terms of religion and the arts, that there too, I don't know if I could do that as well in other 
in other circumstances, in other situations. Right. One seems to nurture the other. Yeah, I was going to ask that. And do you, were you, would you say you were drawn to art in a similar way? I, I think so. I think that people, most people, I can say that of myself. Mm -hmm. Can you have a um, repeat, repeat yeah. question? Um, can you just, um, when you're answering me, do it in a complete sentence? So, because we're not, no one's going to hear my questions. So oh, I see. Answers. Yeah. So uh -huh. you could just rephrase it. If right, just, uh, okay, I'll try to think of that. Sorry to interrupt. I had asked if you were drawn to art in a, in a uh -huh. similar way. Okay. Right, as far as my being drawn to art, um, I think that started at a very young age also. I can honestly say that though my par parents weren't artists as such, they certainly favored creativity. And so uh, our home was, I think, a creative place. Dad did some woodwork and so on, and Mom some sewing and quilting and um, even the baking and cooking. Uh, th things were, were creative. We lived in a creative environment and uh, the grounds also, flowers and gardens and so on. They, we did a lot, uh, a lot of canning in the fall and so on. There was, it was just a home that was creative that way. And at a young age, also at school, I remember being encouraged to, to draw, to paint, to be involved in a variety of crafts. And that was always significant to me and it was always, it sort of became, I guess, part of my um, identity and it was one of the things I excelled in so it just felt good to be able uh, to do it. Um, so with time that just developed and fortunately some very significant people who were more knowledgeable in art uh, affirmed that and guided me in it so that I didn't just get stuck in one little craft or something that maybe would not have been as creative um, especially into later into seminary. I had some people there who were very artistic and uh, also I think it was very important both through books but also going to museums and so on to be exposed to the arts. So when, once you're exposed to the arts I think that that uh, just develops. So I've done artwork in a sense as long as I can remember. Matter of fact I remember uh, a little painting on glass with sort of crumbled up, um, uh, uh, crumbled up aluminum foil behind it, was hanging in our kitchen. And after a while, I was a little bit embarrassed by that because I'd done it when I was seven years old. It was written on the back, you know, Paul, seven years old, and it was dear to my parents. Um, and in a sense, I guess it should have been dear to me. I, but as you grow up, you know, if you're a teenager and your father points out that uh, you're the one who did this little painting uh, in the kitchen, on the kitchen wall, maybe then it, it loses some of its uh, flavor for, for me. I still have that, by the way. Uh, it was given to me once my, once my parents went. Uh, so it's, it's something that always just, some things seem to be natural, huh? They seem to sort of just develop the way things grow, um, the way the body grows, I think also our talents, our spirit, uh, those things grow also if we allow them to, you know. Mm -hmm. The plant needs sunshine and water and a little bit of tender loving care and I think these other things do too. Sounds like you had a really nurturing environment for, for both your uh, spiritual and your artistic. I think so. To grow. Uh, yeah, I, I think that the, the, the spiritual atmosphere was certainly very important uh, and yet we lived a very humble life. We were rather poor with five children. Dad was a mill worker. Mom stayed at home. And um, where was this? In Sanford. I grew up in Sanford, which is a town very close to New Hampshire. We're only a couple hours north of Boston, really. So Boston, Massachusetts. So we're, you know, in the south of the state, uh, the very south of the state of Maine. Okay. Mm -hmm. 